Welcome back, everyone. Today is Tuesday, May the 9th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abed Anshah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions for Dr. Shaw or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can send us an email at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep this conversation moving by supporting the show, sharing it online, leaving us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a link in the description so you can do just that. But before we do... You know what time it is. It's the verse of the day. The verse, verse of, of the, the day. day. <laughs> That's copyrighted. Nice. Nobody steal that. <laughs> I will sue you. The ver- No, we're not going to do all that now. We're Sorry. not going to engage in but please, engage all that. All right. But please don't steal that. Please don't. The verse of the day today comes from Psalm 145. I like that we've been in the Psalms a lot recently. You know why? Because I'm doing a class on the Psalms right now. Dr. Oh, Shaw really? Gave, yep. Dr. Shaw gave me a commentary by uh, Charles Bullock, and I'm really enjoying it. And nice. I'm, I'm at this point kind of just reading it for fun. Yeah. Yep. So the verse that I take is uh, Psalm 145, Mm -hmm. verses 3 and 4. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Yeah, I was thinking on this when uh, when I was writing the run sheet. I was thinking on that psalm talking about his greatness is unsearchable. Mm. There's so much to it. And every single fact that any human being has ever thought or known about God is contained to our brains. No matter what, how much we learn about God, it's limited mm-hmm. by by what we can comprehend. Yeah, there's like like every single human thought or idea about God is point like zero 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 one percent of what there is to to know about Him. Yeah, it, it, at a certain point, you just can't even continue to think about it yeah. anymore. I had a conversation with a guy. Uh, this was years ago when I was in college. Uh, I was working at uh, I was working at a, like a local like amusement park kind of mm-hmm. go- a mini golf course, um, and we were sitting in the break room. And he found out I was a Christian. Mm-hmm. Found that I was like going uh, eventually going to seminary to like pursue religious higher education. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna stump this guy" because he was one of those like <laughs> combative atheists mm-hmm. almost. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I think he was. I think he would term himself an agnostic um but he was like what about this what about this what about this and you know i would you know graciously like okay well here's what the bible says about that here's what the bible says about that okay well i'm not sure about that let me go look it up and i'll, I'll have you an answer next week uh but i looked at him one day i said hey i'm i'm more than happy to continue to engage in these discussions mm-hmm. I, i'm you know i hurt my feelings at all you're being very respectful of what i believe I, i'm more than happy to continue discussing this but at some point you're gonna have to acknowledge that you're gonna get to a point where you just can't understand anymore about God. Right. Like there are things about God that you are never going to understand, and you have got to be okay with that. Yeah, because God is infinitely more than we are. Mm-hmm. We can't comprehend everything there is to know about God, but we should try to. Yeah, and the goal isn't to know Him, meaning to fully comprehend Him. Right, it's to understand that relationship and, and desire to grow closer to Him. Yep. Like, yeah, we want to understand as much as we can, but it's like you said, you have to at some point be okay with saying, "I'll never know everything." Yeah, and that's the point. He's exactly. God and we're not. Exactly. Um, you know, we were, you were talking about being in school, and, and I was just kind of mentioned this class that I took on the Psalms. I wanted to tell you about this uh, huge tactical error that I made this week. Oh, oh no. I, I goofed up with my Psalms professor. Uh-oh. So I'm, I'm taking, I'm, I'm at Southeastern, and uh, I'm taking a class, an Old Testament study. It was a book study, and I was like, well, being, you know, a worship pastor, I, I'm really in to the Psalms. Yeah. I would like to take a book, a, a work, uh, a, a class diving deep into the Psalms. And so, um, it was pretty cool because Dr. Shaw gave me that commentary by Bullock and I was going through it and reading it. And I mean, there was a lot of great stuff about the Psalms and mm-hmm. like how they categorize the Psalms, the different, like, okay, these Psalms have these elements and these Psalms have these elements, but sometimes these elements will be over here. And it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, you know, they say like, uh, I don't know. It's like, there's, the categories don't always match up, and yet there are definite categories. Yeah. Anyway, it's just a really interesting class. So uh, after the quizzes were done, it was like, all right, we're going to do worksheets. And this will be in place of any quizzes or any final exams. There's no like, there's no final exam. You're going to do these eight worksheets, but they're pretty hefty. They're pretty thick. It takes like the week to do them all because you're looking up Hebrew. You're going on Blue Letter Bible. You're looking in Strong's Concordance and mm. finding Hebrew words mm-hmm. and finding different passages where they are. So it's it's they're involved. They're yeah. very involved. Uh, all that to say, you really don't want to miss one. Right. You don't want to like put that off to the last minute because you'll be up literally all night, and even then you'll probably get half of it done. Mm. So last week, I didn't do it. I just forgot because we had Easter break, 
And then the week after that, my brain was still on Easter break. And I was like, yep. I, I, so Friday comes along. They're due on Saturday. I'm like, I didn't do worksheet six. So I'm like, okay, I goofed up. I'm going to have to do what college students do. And I'm going to email a professor and I'm going to list all the things going on in my life yeah. and hope he takes pity on me. So I was like, hey, this was my fault. Here's all the things that I was doing this week that took precedence. I didn't use my time wisely. I would love it if you would reopen worksheet six and let me turn it in. If you just give me 24 hours, I'll have it in. So he emails me back. Hey, buddy, no problem. Happy to do that. Here's where I goof up even further. Oh, no. I go on and I download because I'm in a rush. Yeah. I'm trying to like get it done because I want at least two days to right. go through it. So it's like late and it's like midnight going on one in the morning. And I download worksheet seven by mistake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and no. Start, and I start doing, I'm like, none of this looks familiar. I don't know any of these I words. I don't know any of these. Like, we didn't, we haven't gone over royal <laughs> psalms, didactic <laughs> psalms. What the, what? we haven't done that. So I'm like looking in the notes and stuff and I'm like doing the best I can. So it takes like the full two days. And I'm like a day overdue of when I said I would have it done. So I go to turn it in and I can't. And I'm like, wow, he said he opened it. Did he only open it? So I emailed him again. I was like, hey, um, are you still okay if I turn in Psalm, I mean, worksheet six late? I can't, I can't open it. And he's emailing me back. He's like, hey, it's open on my end. I'm not sure what's going on. And I'm like, okay, I, I can't drop it in. And then I look, I'm like, oh, wait, this isn't for the wrong week. I was like, this is worksheet seven. So I go and look and I'm trying to turn it into worksheet seven. So I'm like, what in the world? So it turns out I got my weeks mixed up. I didn't miss worksheet seven i missed worksheet six mm -hmm. so now i've got to call email him again and say hey you did open it up but i did the wrong worksheet i said good news is worksheet seven is done early but i need you to open up worksheet six <laughs> and uh i need to just turn that one in so oh, i had to no. basically cram two of them which are supposed to take a week each in like three days good grief it was horrible because he was like I'm, I'm looking at it and it's open and i was like no it's not letting me turn it in and i'm trying to turn in worksheet seven into the wrong week mm. and it just was a big mess and i looked like a crazy person <laughs> your professor was like i don't understand like what is i feel like it's pretty straightforward and i'm and i'm not like a am not like a lazy guy like we we work really hard we're pretty organized like more or less here at clearview we're on top of our game um, and we're also doing stuff in the community. Like we're, we're mm -hmm. helping other people. We're putting on events for other people who are coming in. We're collaborating with other podcasters and other radio shows and advertisers and all this stuff. But I looked like a fool. I looked like a crazy person. I was like, it's not letting me turn it in. And then I was like, oh, hey, I did the wrong one. Sorry. Can you, I know you did me a favor, but can now you do me another favor? In my head, you are Doc Brown from uh -huh. Back to the Future. Like hair just stand out crazy angles. 1.21 gigawatts. I've been reading, I've been reading Hebrew all day, Marty. It's not in Strong's Concordance, Marty. <laughs> oh, it's your kids, no. Marty. They're not reading Hebrew. I'm so sick of Hebrew words. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it was bad, dude. It was bad. I did not look professional oh, at all. I, really I, I did hope, not look like a competent person. I really hope your professor listened to this show. <laughs> I'll send it to him. And if not, you should at least send him this episode. I'm going to send be it like, to him. Hey, uh, just give your shout out. On our I'm going to send it to him. Uh, Dr. McDaniel, <laughs> thank you very much for being merciful for me. Oh, <laughs> I, man. I hate that that happened. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. We've got an exciting episode planned for you guys. I'm not sure if it's as exciting as that. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. What are the um, what are the school blunders that you have been in your life? Like, what are some things that you've done? Maybe you missed an assignment. Maybe, like John, you downloaded the wrong worksheet for the wrong <laughs> week. I don't know. Write in and let us know, 252-582-5028. We've got an exciting episode planned for you guys today. We're going to get Dr. Shaw, but if you have any questions or suggestions, make sure you text those in, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, my name's Ellie. And I'm David. And we want to take a minute and let you know how we can actually serve you as you're listening to Clearview today. The Bible paints an extraordinary picture of who we are as a church body. The mission of Clearview Church is to lead all people into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. A huge part of leading people is praying for them. A big reason that Christians have unanswered prayers in their life is because they're not praying. You know, 1 John 5.15 says... And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. If you're listening to the Clevey Today Show, we want to know how we can pray for you as well. There's a number of ways that you can get in touch with us at Clearview and share your prayer request, but the best way is by texting us at 252 
582-5028. You can also send us an email at prayer at clearviewbc.org, or you can download the Clearview app on iTunes or Google Play. You know, on that app, there's a dedicated prayer wall that helps us to get to know what's going on in your life, how we can pray for you, and how we can take any necessary steps to get you moving in the right direction. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028. That's right, and if today's your first time ever joining us on the Clearview Today Show, we want to let you know who's talking to you. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website at Abadan Shah. Dot com. That's right. And Dr. Shah, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but I've got to know, of all of the Westerns that you've seen, because I, yes. I know that Westerns are your fave. I know that right. you love Westerns. <clears throat> is there one that stands out to you that maybe maybe it's your favorite or maybe it's just like the, the most iconic in your mind? Well, it's not as much Western movies that I'm a big fan of. I like the Old West. You like just the mythology mm. of the Old West, like yeah. the whole atmosphere. Yeah, that, some, that some is mythology. I think uh, some is uh, truth. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more on the truth side of things. But, you know, the mythological side, the, the side of, uh, you know, the Old West, the simpler times, the railroad coming and all that. I mean, it's, I think it, it makes it fun mm -hmm. and exciting. So I don't think all of it is mythology, mm -hmm. but... Um, some of it maybe yeah. through Hollywood. Maybe of some course. of those tales have been yeah. kind of embellished a little bit. Grandiose yeah. Yeah. a little bit. Maybe Hollywood got their got their hands on some of it. Well, I mean, they had a winning formula, like Western movies and, and that whole like cultural phenomenon that that has latched on and, and has persisted. I mean, people right. still love Westerns and, and the old West and cowboys and, and that whole genre of thinking to, I mean today people still love it how were you exposed in growing up in India to the old western movies like that aired here in America did they come over seas yes okay. so my first exposure to western stuff was reading Bonanza comics okay mm. yeah <laughs> that's so, pretty cool yeah so I don't know how those comics got to me but reading Bonanza reading Bonanza comic books was the way I got exposed to the old west wow and and seeing you know um, you know how this 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 father and three sons and how they're living out in this massive ranch mm -hmm. and then they have their adventures and then they have the bad guys that come and try to cause trouble and those kind of things and how they yep. they're like so sensible and then they have this dilemma they have to fix and solve and and you know they're trying to be nice at the same time they have to be tough with the bad guys it, it just appealed to me that freedom yep. that that sense of vast outdoors was was a was a big deal yeah mm. and then in time I read read the Virginian Okay, a lot of these things I didn't get from movies. Mm -hmm. I read the books. Mm -hmm. mm. So Virginian, I read that. Um, and any of you all here know? Never one read. About, no. never, never heard of the <laughs> Virginian. No. You know, uh -huh. I don't know that. It one. was a little tough to get through for me because I was so young when I started reading them. Uh, so it was a little tough. And then I um, there was uh, um, a group called Operation Mobilization. It's a big denomination, mm -hmm. uh, not denomination, a big big uh, evangelistic uh, organization. And they had these two massive ships, Logos and Dulos, and they would travel through um, um, I I you know, Asia and even Africa and other places, and then they would dock, mm -hmm. and they had people on the ships, and, and they would go out and share the gospel wow. and sell books, good Christian books. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then people would come tour the ship as well and, and hear messages and, and teaching times and all that. So... Um, my dad worked with them, Operation Mobilization. In fact, the one who started all of that just died. Really? Wow. Just wow. died last uh, Sunday, I think. Uh, Saturday. Oh, wow. Yeah, Friday or Saturday. Last Friday or Saturday, he, uh, he, he passed away. Um, his name was George Werver. Mm. So he, he passed away. But anyways, so one of the times they were at our church, they had a book 
called Treachery at Cimarron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know you guys have tried yeah. to buy it. I've tried to buy it. You cannot find that you book. You can't find it anywhere. Yeah. Because you brought it. We, the reason I heard about it is because you brought it on one of our staff retreats. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about it and you were reading. I think Thomas was reading through it. And you were talking about it. You said, you know, that book kind of got me into the Old West and it, right. it really meant a lot to me. So I was like, well, maybe. I mean, I, I love fiction. I, I read fiction every single day. So. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go buy it. You cannot find it. Yeah. yeah. You cannot find that book. But that's where I would learn about the the cowboys and and um and then about, you know, the tough life, the hard life and, and it's a lot a lot of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I learned. And then of course, after that I was exposed to uh Louis L'Amour, mm-hmm. his his novels mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Zane Grey, yep. his novels. So I read a lot of those novels mm-hmm. about the old west. Some of that may be embellished. That's interesting <laughs> to me, though, that that's what got you into it. Instead of like, instead of the the movies or right. things like that, it was it was reading about it. It was the yes. books, it was literature, the comics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's fun because then literature takes you to a place where you kind of are in control of your imagination. You can yeah. sort of you can sort of scape that out and see it, and it becomes much more real to you. Yeah, you know, rather than interpreting visuals that you're seeing, you kind of create those visuals. For yeah, yourself. those visuals came in my head first. Mm-hmm. Of the big red red buttes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. out in Arizona, um, and then seeing the vast open landscape and the um, um, uh, what do you call um, like the canyons and the, the canyons and 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 you know uh, the, the the cowboys hiding over there mm, or yeah. the rustlers hiding out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> those things appeal to me. Without having seen much of the landscape pictures, yeah. So the these these pictures, these these other than the comic books, yeah. yeah. These pictures and things that you crafted in your minds, when you when you got to see those things in person, mind blowing. I was going to ask how close, very how close, close was your very close. mental picture? Yeah, I saw the pictures later on. And of course, as a teenager, I began to see it, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's the way." That's west. what I always imagined wow. it looked what I, like. And then I actually made trips southwest. I've been, I mean, you name it. I've been to all the old cow towns. I've been to Tombstone, mm-hmm. where the you know Tombstone, OK Corral. I've uh, been there. I've been to a Dodge City. You, you know, I don't know how many more I can talk about. I have <laughs> Doc Holliday's grave. I've been, yep. I've been to all those places. Yeah. So what was it like? How did you first, you first went once you were married and had kids? Was that the first time that you'd made the trip yes. out west? Yeah, we had um, Southern Baptist Convention. Mm-hmm. And so that was out in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. So so we went, Nicole and I went out there. And then I told Nicole, I said, I want to go see Tombstone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Tombstone came out, um, or I think, 1990 or 1991 somewhere there anyways it was a big mu- movie mm-hmm. and i was like i want to go to okay the okay corral and sure enough we went to tombstone we had to go like almost two hours south of phoenix mm-hmm. and i was like man we're going in the middle of nowhere there's nothing else out here mm-hmm. <laughs> are you sure we're going in the right direction <laughs> and sure enough we were got to tombstone and it was it felt like I was in Tombstone yeah. because there's nothing else there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just that's it. It's a lot of emptiness. I think the thing that draws me to westerns, because um, because my dad played westerns pretty much nonstop mm-hmm. uh, when I was growing up, and I think people write westerns off a lot because they they're older films and they look, you know, they they all kind of look the same, so people kind of tend to think they're the same. But westerns really say a lot about where society was in that day. Yeah, westerns have a lot of um, commentary. Mm-hmm written mm-hmm. subtextually mm-hmm. into the films that I think really speaks a lot to either where society was in that day or where they feared society might yeah. be going. Yeah. You know, I, I think it epitomizes that American spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, I know a lot of people today want to revise history and all that and make it something it's not, but it really epitomizes the American spirit. Like, Hey, I am my own person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm, I have my freedoms. I have my rights, mm-hmm. and if I work hard, work smart, mm-hmm. I'm, I can I can do what I want to do. Yeah. And to me, I would add the God element. To me, mm-hmm. is the most important one. And many many of them were, you That's know, right. you know, God fearing. So it, it just it just captures the American spirit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I love it. Yeah, I love it. You need to see that, <laughs> that picture of a of a simpler time. I think is yes. the way we talked about it in the past. Is when when life wasn't as fast paced, when life didn't move, you know, quite in the same direction, times were simpler. 
mm-hmm. and people, you know, valued those things that you were, that we've been talking about that seem to be lost on culture today. Yeah, we have, we have. It's, it's sad because um, in our young generation does not know that period now we are far more international which is great i love that part because we need to be connected and be aware of the rest of the world Mm -hmm. but at the same time there's something very unique and distinctive about the american world Mm -hmm. and we're losing that (laughs) i think that was one thing that you that you told me and i think you've said it on the show many times but the the image of america when you were young and living in india is not the image that most people have that live in America today, right? You know, the, the America was this land of promise and opportunity where, like you said, even if you come from the lowest social situation, right. you can become something because right. this is a land of opportunity. This is the land that God has his hand on. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I love it. And we've been out West at least two, three times now. Uh, one, Nicole and I just went and did a whole tour. I mean, we went through Kansas, mm. uh, and and then we, of course, Missouri, Kansas, and then we moved up to um, Colorado, went to Buffalo Bill's mm-hmm. uh, museum mm-hmm. and his grave, went, went over there, and then we made our way down south um, through Glenwood Canyon, mm-hmm. and, and amazingly, you guys got to go with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one of our staff retreats, and mm-hmm. I always wanted to go to Doc Holliday's grave. You know, they say he's maybe buried in Georgia, maybe in Colorado. Um, I think he was in Colorado. Yeah, I, I can't see them back in those days dragging his body all the way yeah, back. all the way back to Georgia. Yeah. It, it was cool to go to, in Colorado and see that grave because we had our son at the time, and uh, I, I remember we had to hike up this mountain to get there. Like the grave was on this like mountainside, mm-hmm. and so I remember having. Gavin strapped to he was a baby at the time having him strapped to my chest and it kind of even though like I didn't look a thing like John Wayne like John Wayne would not go across like hike with like a baby <laughs> like in a the baby strap carrier. and like this big probably yeah, not yeah this big thing of like water to hydrate himself but at the same time it kind of brings that outdoorsy element to you where it's yeah. like I'm I'm a mountain man right yeah. now you know <laughs> I'm really, climbing like, this mountain we we don't have a lot of hiking opportunities necessarily where we are I mean that there are probably some but just it's not like quite as prevalent but out there walking around in Colorado like walking up like literally hiking up to where Doc Holliday's grave you know supposedly was we walking up there I was like I could get into hiking like I yeah could, I could be about hiking I could, I could do this yeah I typically and I probably couldn't but but <laughs> that mindset was there that excitement I was like I could I could do this even though there's like <laughs> trails and there's like a, a path that's like with nice signs yeah. and like planted flowers and fences you're like <laughs> I can like conquer this mountain like when I get to the top I'll have bested this mountain yeah it's like just this this animal like manhood inside you where it's like no matter what I'm hurting right now but I'm getting to the top I have conquered this. <laughs> yes that's that's kind of funny I can imagine stepping into town like that as like back in those western days and being like this is gonna be my town <laughs> yeah you know what I mean <laughs> Well, I, I I think everybody should should go out west oh, yeah. and see some of those places. Yeah. So, I, and I know it's hard for many people to do it because it's expensive to travel and the commitment and you know work and all that. But it's it's worth it. We went when we went out to Arizona when we saw like those buttes, like you were talking about those red mountains. We actually got to film out there. Do you remember when we were? Yes. Like, there there was a point where because uh, we've been on tours before where we're trying to film. Like we went to Israel and we we did some filming. I think we did that twice, yes. you and me and David. And it was it was fun, but at the same time, we're on a tour. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're at the mercy of the tour. And so we yeah. have to kind of go off and film our thing. And same thing we did at Grandfather Mountain. We have to kind of go off and film our thing. But in Arizona, it's like, this is our time. That's we it. can yeah. stop we on the complete road. complete control. Yeah, we can stop on the road. And it's just, it's literally what you see in the movies. It's a road and mountains and that's it yep. yeah it, like road mountains and sky and so just being able to just take our time yeah. get whatever pictures we wanted we were running in the middle of the road yep and seriously taking pictures and videos and i'm there talking were, <laughs> there were no cars for miles and you could literally see for miles like yeah you you could see cars come in like 5 10 20 minutes in the future really because yeah it's just flat yeah, yeah it's like hey there's a car coming i think you guys have about seven minutes to get out of the road <laughs> <laughs> i see them they've gone from like a, a speck to about the size of a pea so we yeah. got probably about five we should more be minutes. okay yeah we yeah. should get like maybe 20 more pictures but then we really got to get out of the road <laughs> and i love that scenery there because that's where john ford and john wayne made some of those movies that's monument valley is mm-hmm. near there mm-hmm. i think that's what you're referring yep. to yep and uh 
unfortunately we couldn't go in there but i've been in there yeah you know i've been into monument valley it is so beautiful mm. i mean just the red rock our whole family went in there mm-hmm. um back in 2009 mm-hmm. and i could almost see any moment john wayne come <laughs> just walking around the corner. careful <laughs> easy there pilgrim <laughs> <laughs> Just taking pictures, man. I don't want no trouble from you. Because <laughs> just, just, you know, taking a cattle drive somewhere, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Just walking out, just like like time forgot him, and he's just still there, just kind of wandering around. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, like, time forgot, it, like like this place that time forgot, because you, you also said earlier, like, this t- simpler time. And mm-hmm. I noticed a lot of themes in these movies that seems to be, like, progress is typically the enemy. Like, you yeah. come into town, like, this lone gunslinger rolls into town. Yeah. And there's a railroad being built, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, the people of the town they they got a vamoose. But yeah. there's there's this outlaw that's promising safety, and just I always noticed that these they have very like we were saying earlier they have very real themes that mm-hmm. people and I think tomorrow actually we're going to talk about the transcontinental railroad. That's yeah. kind of serendipitous, but I, I don't know. It's, there's just there's something in them that I think people overlook. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, just the adventure, mm-hmm. the unknown. That is what drives us to go check it out. What is there? Yeah. What's out there? You yeah. know, what can we find? <laughs> yeah. That sort of manifest <laughs> destiny sort of feel yeah. like, yeah, I just want to see all that there is to this land. And yeah. that's one reason why a lot of people went out there, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that's one reason some bad guys went out there too, mm-hmm. you know, like the movie Tombstone. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, it's it's a little Hollywood done, right? I mean, it's um, it's a little bit embellished, but the the cowboys, of course, were doing their thing, trying to make their life and create like almost like a mafia-like mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. And so Wyatt Earp and his brother and, and others were um, were uh, kind of a threat to them. Mm. And of course, then, then began the, the, the famous or infamous, I don't know which one you want to say, <laughs> <laughs> shootout at the OK Corral. Mm-hmm. You, and you yeah. said you went to the OK Corral. Yeah, yeah, I did. It doesn't look anything... Like you would imagine, it's not like a vast open space. Mm-hmm. No, it's literally from here, like twenty yards, ten yards. That's as much as it. Wow. It is that they were firing very close to each other. Yeah, and and you know they had gun smoke. Mm-hmm. That that part hadn't been worked out yet. So when you fire, smoke, smoke comes, comes out. out. So hard to see who you're firing at. Yeah. Mm. So you have to be up close. Wow. Wow. Yeah, stakes seem a little bit higher there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's also more personal. I mean, it makes for a more personal battle. Yeah. You know, yeah. When, when the stakes are so personal like that, you're in there and there's, yeah. it's yeah. just nitty gritty and it's almost, like I said, an animal. Yeah. You know? And those characters are so iconic. You know, you talk about Wyatt Earp or Doc Holliday, uh, such iconic characters. Mm-hmm. And some of them were, you know, little, they knew how to sell it. Mm-hmm. They, they did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some. Uh, others knew how to sell them because you know Doc Holliday died. I mean, mm-hmm. when, you know, he wasn't there to publicize himself. Other right. people did and right. made him more than he he was. Mm-hmm. But still, he was a quite a character. Yeah, I mean, he was a staple of American history. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, d- uh, you know, he he actually was a dentist. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a dentist. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He studied dentistry and he he unfortunately had tuberculosis, mm. TB. Yeah, and so. Oh, Decided to go out west. He had a rough, rough childhood. You know, lost his mom and all that stuff. So it's kind of sad to think about. But then he went out west, trying to get that that dry air, dry mm-hmm. heat, whatever. I don't think that quite worked that way. Didn't work the way that he was hoping. <laughs> yeah, he got into um, gambling, mm-hmm. and he got into all kinds of drinking. And before you know it, he kinda, was the man he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He. Prior to all of that, prior to going any of those places, you know, he he did have a commitment that he made in, in to God. So mm. I don't know. I don't know where he stood. Mm. Was he just a prodigal? Maybe. Yeah. You know, who knows? Interesting thing about. I like to think that he was going away so that he wouldn't get his family sick. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I see that. Kind of like that that um sacrifice, that honorable sacrifice yeah. Yeah. sort of thing. I've yeah. got to go and. Make my own way, but at the same time, keep my loved ones safe. My yeah, safe. yeah, I'm not going to stick around because if I do, I'm going to give it to them and then they'll get sick. Yeah, mm. that's that's my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's always fun to think about, and it's and it's got sort of that Western romanticism with yeah. it. Yeah, well, it's kind of like we've been talking about, like you, you let your imagination run wild, like you yeah. kind of explore all those possibilities. What's not written, what's not filled in, we can kind of you know 
It's often yeah. more, yeah, it's more fun than what's there. Yeah. yeah. And then there, there's a lot of stories about people coming to know the Lord as well on mm-hmm. the frontier, you know, or in the, in the Midwest. Yeah. So that, that's also part of the American story. People coming to know Jesus Christ, revivals happening, you know, tent revivals, all of that was also moving that way. Wow. I suddenly want to go get like a belt buckle and like a cowboy hat and some boots. You ready for it? I, I, I'm <laughs> like a little yeah. piece of hay. Like uh, yeah. John Wayne scarf. Easy there, Pilgrim. Easy there. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we're, we're going to talk about the railroad tomorrow, but maybe we can jump back and revisit this this yeah. conversation about Let's Westerns. I want to explore that a little bit more. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, if you have questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. You can partner with us financially on that same website. We're grateful to all of our giving partners. We count you as our Clearview Today Show family That's as right. we impact the nations with the gospel of Christ. That's right. I thought it might be appropriate to actually end with a John Wayne quote. He yes. says, uh, a friend of mine told me to shoot first and ask questions later. I was going to ask him why, but I had to shoot him. <laughs> he said that yeah he said that <laughs> oh my god John Wayne oh that's too funny I was gonna ask him why but I had to shoot him unfortunately you hate to see it you hate uh, to see the cars funny. break that way we love you guys we'll see you next time on Clear Today